everybody, welcome back to Anderson's TV. I have got the Lion of Nashville himself on the line, live uh, with some exciting news. So, Jared Nichols, here he is. Um, where are fresh from your living room by the looks of things? Yeah, hey, Lee, how are you, brother? <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. Um, coming to you live from Nashville, Tennessee, oh. and uh, it's 9 a.m., and I just had some coffee, and I'm getting wired. And I have a new guitar. Well, I must admit, it's um, on the one hand, we were just saying, I'm gutted. There's no NAM show. It would normally be the one time a year we could all hang out, get together. Um, but on the other hand, I, I hopefully I can feel slightly less self-conscious about the fact that you are so much more buff than I am. And if I stand <laughs> next to you, the, the like you're seven or eight inches taller. And anyway, so I, on Zoom, we'll we can we can use some sort of CGI to make myself look uh, similarly impressive. I hope. Yeah, we gotta like put an <laughs> Arnold body on you or something. <laughs> <laughs> so look, I am holding a killer guitar here, uh, which you bought out with Epiphone a couple of years back with, I think, modest ambitions as to what it might do. And uh, Absolutely. I, I think it's fair to say it took everyone a little bit of surprise, didn't it? Yeah. So like everyone that's tuned in and hopefully they're still tuned in, but I never thought I'd have a signature guitar, really. It was like a dream, right? Everyone says like the 14 year old and you, <laughs> you know, it's, it's your biggest dream to have a guitar. And when Epiphone and Gibson approached me about doing a run of Old Glory, I was obviously over the moon, but I had very low expectations because I'm not Slash or, you know, Joe Perry. I didn't have that kind of clout. When they put the guitar out, I remember they started with 250 of them. And I thought that that was a ton. And those went right away. I think we sold another, them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys took them. <laughs> and then another run of like 500, another run of 500. So it really took me by surprise and it really took them by surprise. And I think it was really cool. And it spoke a lot about, you know, just people love the guitar. Even if they didn't know my ugly mug, they dug the guitar. And I think that that was a really strong thing. And I thought that was super cool. You you did it. You, you hit it just right with this. Because I, in fairness, you know, you were definitely a, a rising star at the time. I remember when we first met and you'd um, you'd had some success in, in uh, like literally guitar competitions in, a, in L.A. And you were doing your own thing and the band was just getting off and you had a sound and a vibe. And I think Gibson recognized that early on that they saw that kind of, oh, is this the next big thing kind of coming along here? And it was, you know, smart move by them. But what you didn't do, which was the genius bit, is you didn't just take a Les Paul or an SG and say, I'll take it in a different color and that'll be my signature. You actually came up with something that they didn't have already. Um, and it was authentic as well, because you had the Gibson original version of this, didn't you? So for people that haven't yeah, seen so that, tell us a bit about that. So it all came out of necessity. Now, if, if people haven't seen me play, I write with my left hand. So for me, playing guitar, I never got along with a pick. So I play righty like, like most, but the pick never worked. So I developed this kind of weird finger style technique, you know, like leaning on guys like obviously Jeff Beck and Mark Knopfler, but also kind of finger style -y. And when I played regular Les Pauls growing up, loved them, all great. But I often said, man, if I didn't have that extra pick up there, I think it would really help me out. I could kind of dig in a little more with my finger style. And... As most players, I was going through different guitars. I tried so many different guitars. Um, I always came back to a Les Paul. And I love the sound of a P90. And one of my biggest heroes, Leslie West of Mountain, and of, of course, like guys like Eric Clapton and stuff, whenever I heard them play, it was like I thought of a, a Les Paul. And I love P90 pickups. So I, I, I thought of, you know, maybe I could do something cool here. And it was right when Gibson was changing ownership. Basically, they had, the, they had a showroom in Beverly Hills. I was living in Los Angeles at the time, and they had a workshop, and it was filled with, like, it was the misfit guitars, and it was parts and pickups and everything. And they just were so amazing, all my friends over there. They said, just go in there, because I asked if I could, like, kind of start Frankensteining some guitars. Um, so the original Old Glory came out of the necessity. I thought it was so cool. A black Les Paul Custom, single P90, volume tone, I loved it. The original, I just ripped out the pickup, man. And it was just like, it felt right. It felt like me. And if anything, it inspired me to play. It spoke to me. And it was almost like what I didn't have made it that much more special. So moving forward, 
most people were like, what's wrong with your guitar? Did you break the pickup? You know, <laughs> um, but it became a thing. And speaking about that, I played that guitar and I toured with that guitar for four years straight. And it was my it was my jam, man. So like I said, when they approached me about it, it only seemed right to go along with it and do an Epiphone because the best part about Epiphone is uh, I think everyone knows by now, you know, the quality of Epiphone and, and the care is, has gone up so much. But when I picked it up, I, I dug it. I was like, no, this is cool. It doesn't need to be a custom shop. It doesn't need to be this limited, you know, select tops or neck, whatever. I just thought it's a piece of wood with a microphone on it. <laughs> Feels good. It's heavy. It's got a big neck and it's it, it's ready to rock. No, I mean, I, there's something on all single pickup guitars and I've, I've talked about this before and I think every player that, that is drawn to a single pickup guitar, all of a sudden, everything that you need the guitar to do, you have to find it in the way you play it, the way you pick it, the way you find the, the tonal, tonal sort of uh, intricacies from here. You know, there's, you're not really a big pedal guy, are you? Or even a big kind of channel switching amp guy. It's everything's from the way you approach the way you play the guitar. Yes, that opened my eyes. Exactly what you said. Um, when I was trying to find my own sound, if I could say that, or my own style of, especially with a, with blues and rock, mm. you know, as well as I do, it's like, I grew up listening to Stevie Ray, so I wanted to be a Stevie Ray wannabe forever. And then it was like, I thought to myself, okay, this is awesome, but am I ever going to sound like me? <laughs> so I, I tried to do this soul searching and like I went on, I tried to do my own thing. And what ended up happening was I quickly realized that I didn't really rely on my sound and, and different effects. Like, you know, I didn't find it in a phase or I didn't find it in using different delays. What I love was a push tube amp. And, and just having a guitar with a really good volume and tone knob. And I realized that, you know, especially with a single pickup guitar, like you said, it forces you to play and find all the sounds. So for me, that was my whole thing is like, man, I'm going to try and get the most tone and the most different vibe out of this guitar that I can. And to be honest, I, I, I'm such a bougie guy. I actually, I still, I use the Klon and that's all I have on is a Klon. And uh, I keep that on all the time and I just use my hands and the volume and tone and just keep it real. And uh, there's a lot of things I can't do on guitar, but I try and get all the sounds I can. Well, I, I think I'd like to hear some of that stuff and we'll go into that, but just very quickly, obviously you can see, or people watching can see, I'm holding the original black one, which is like a, a satin black finish, double bound, um, as, as we were explaining before. But of course you have a, a gold bullion bar of a, of a variant there. So what is this? So this is it. This is you're holding old glory and I'm holding gold glory. <laughs> so I have I have my camera up, too. So hopefully you can see it a little better. It's uh, an all gold version of that guitar. Now, most people would think to themselves, you know, as you can see on the back, it's all gold. And we didn't want to do they asked what kind of gold I wanted. I said, I don't want to do a standard gold top. Is there any way you could make it like a deeper gold? So Epiphone, they actually they really got behind it and they figured out it's called a double satin gold. And what's so cool is I know it's not picking up on the zoom, but on mine it is. It's like a really deep complex gold. So when you see it, it's not like a regular gold top. It's, it's really striking. And it almost has a little bit of like a glitter to it on the back. I went for the black and you can see it on mine better. Yeah. Stinger. Obviously and you got we, the white. We got the white. Yeah. Yep. Um, got the brand new Epiphone headstock, right? So even that alone with the guitar, it's like visually striking that bigger headstock. It looks great. And what was cool on this one, which I didn't know they could do on Epiphone, they did aged, like very lightly aged nickel hardware. Oh, cool. Which was so different. Um, you know, I usually just play my guitars and they age themselves. But when this one showed up, I was like, wow, the, the, the hardware has this just almost like a VOS kind of you, vibe to you've it. You've gone, is it that satin kind of finish as well? Mm -hmm. The same on the gold. So it's not a heavy, shiny lacquer sort of finish over it, which is lovely no. to play, lovely to play on the back of the neck as well. Um, and and what's cool about it, just just like the original is, the more you play it, the more it'll kind of shine up in certain areas. Yeah. yeah. So it gets like a really cool old school looking vibe. So the wraparound tail piece is like an intonated vintage style wraparound tail piece. But tell me about the pickup, because last time we spoke, maybe the time before that, there was 
various conversations about how deep you were going with the wiring and different companies you were working with and stuff. So what have we got yeah. um, pickup wise on there? So this is a USA Seymour Duncan dog ear P90. Very and cool. And what's funny about this one is they actually didn't have just a standard USA P90 dog ear on their line. So they had to specifically make it for this guitar. Now there is talks about doing some cool things with them, which would be great. Um, but with this pickup, I was able to, they sent me about five or six different ones and I put them in an original and I just wanted the P90, like it's full, it's thick, it's total mid range. And I found with this and this guitar, the CTS pots, you know, mm -hmm. like on the Epis, they have, mm -hmm. it just felt real and it felt, it had that cool, warm vintage vibe, um, but the P90 cut. And the biggest part about having that one pickup is you need to have those pots be able to roll back so you can get a lot of different tones and sounds without sacrificing to go to a pedal or whatever. So it's it's awesome. The Seymour Duncan USA P90. That's very cool. Well, look, you're recording yourself. Hopefully the, the audio is going to be better than what we would normally get on Zoom. So can we, I mean, let, let's maybe like kill two birds with one stone. So, so show off what the guitar can do, but also as well, just... I love watching you play and I just, you know, <laughs> because you, you know, you do, you have developed kind of your own style. Just, I don't know, talk about maybe a little bit about that just so people who, you know, want to learn that style can pick some tips up. Yeah, absolutely. I, I tend to, um, of course, coming from like the blues and, and rock, you know, I'm, I'm a very, uh, I, I lean on the old stuff, the traditional stuff, but I try and put my own flair on it. I emphasis on the attack, the vibrato, the bends. You know, some people say, dude, you bend everything because I'm just, I love that sound. I love mm. that on an electric guitar, we can bend, you know, a piano, keyboards, they don't do it like that. So I'll play a little bit. Hopefully it'll, it'll transfer a little. Yeah. Pretty simple. And without touching the amp, <laughs> if you just take the, if you play a little softer and take the volume down, can you go yeah, yeah, yeah. real clean? So I'm just going to roll my volume to about four or five. Oh. I can bring it back a little more. Bring it back up. Bring it back down. And then if I mess with the tone control, I can rip that all the way back and get some of that. Halfway, it gets that neck pickup, kind of. All the way back up. Yeah, buddy. Oh, what? It's that's it. We just sell all the pedals, boards, and uh, no, it's, I just love that. I, I think that's one of the things that's so um, inspiring about the guitar is there's, there's no right or wrong, but you put your spin on it and the next guy puts his spin on it. And, and it's like everything comes together and you just go, oh, imagine if it was all the same, how boring it would be. But I, it sounds great. It really does. I mean, well, I, I'm only hearing on Zoom, so I'm getting all that kind of weird compression and stuff. But even then I can, 
I still can hear all the ver- variety of, 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 of tone that you got there. Very cool. I think that's the coolest part is, you know, I play the way I play, but everyone's different. Everyone has different influence and different, you know, it, this is the kind of guitar you could pick up and you could just say, man, I love, I want, I want to play punk. I want to play, con- you know, you can get country tones, all the P90 is so versatile and the guitar is like an open palette. And I think that that's the coolest part, even though it's uh, my signature, everyone could put their own stamp on it and play the way they want. Yeah. And, and I think that, again, there's a lot of people will be drawn to the fact that it's not a signature guitar with like your name plastered all over the front and a certain vibe, you know, you can be, you could turn up to a gig and, and people just go, oh man, that's a cool guitar. You know, it's like, what is that then? A single pickup Les Paul? It's like, yeah, that's what it is. You know, it's like, it doesn't have to be, oh, it's this dude's signature model, you know? So I, I, I get it. It's very, very cool. So look, you, um, we were talking before we came on, on camera again, it's like last year for, for musicians like you, where, um, you know, you're, you're still young and still sort of start relatively at the, the sort of the beginning of your journey. Um, and so we were saying before, you know, still most of your income comes from touring and stuff. So last year was a brutal year. Um, did you manage to find some, you know, did it trigger other creative juices? Were you, were you like all of a sudden like a writing machine or, or, or does it just feel like 2020 was a write off and you can't wait to, you know, just get back on the road again? Well, for me personally, 2020 was one of the most productive years that I've actually had. Um, I always said, and I joke around with like my buddies and my bandmates, if I just had one more year <laughs> to just really be able to hone it in and to, to, especially on the songwriting front, especially more as like a well-rounded musician, I thought that that would be incredible. And all of a sudden, like I was saying off camera before was, you know, Anderton's was one of the last things we did last year. We were touring Europe and we made it through the UK and we made our way to Spain. And in Spain, we found out we were going to be going home that day. Wait, you're right. We, we knew exactly right. Do you know, I, you, we had a load of Black Star stuff canceled, didn't we? And it was literally you were here. And I think while you were here, the phone calls were like, ah, we need to get on a plane and go home because this is all going to go down now, isn't it? Well, we did uh, uh, the single I released for that tour. It was this song, Threw Me to the Wolves. Yeah, yeah. And on your guys' session, because we played the live session, the first thing you hear is I I, I was joking and I said, uh, I'm bionic. Or I said something like, like, I won't get. And I'm joking about the virus because at this point I was still kind of like, yeah, just thinking to myself, like, oh, whatever, it's going to be fine. We're going to tour and it's going to be great. Right. Um, so yeah, Anderton's was one of the last things I did like on a live format last year. And then I found myself back in Nashville with a lot of uh, questions and uh, like everybody, a lot of, you know, scared and trying to understand what's happening. But what I did is I, I basically went under a rock and I focused on writing the best songs I could to get ready to put out a record and to tour whenever this, you know, gets to the other side. And it was funny, man, I hadn't played guitar like practiced and sat down for so long. And then I found myself, you know, like revisiting, like, oh, I really, I really want to add this to my style. I want to add this kind of country thing or maybe this cool jazz thing. How do I do that? And I, all of a sudden I had the time because usually when I'm on tour, you know, it's like, boom, 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 next place, next place. Where are we going? What are we doing? So I found myself stopping in a in a in a way that was really productive to say man i'm going to take this time and i'm going to try and make something of it uh well i'm i am pleased that 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 uh you know you felt that there were some positives in 2020 because for so many other musicians out there it's just been a, a impossible um but i i know look i'll do a slight pause here so we can edit this bit out if you want to but sure have you got a tune that you want to just like do the chorus from or anything like that? Or Oh, sure. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, like I'm, thro- I'm totally throwing Jared on the spot here, which is why oh, no, I'm you're totally giving him the chance to say, no, Lee, let's not do that bit. But yeah, if you've got, if, you, if you've written something and you're just going, this is going to be the, the single, I think I'll, I'll, you know, I'll release next or whatever, then by all means, let's give it an early plug here. All right. So, so this is a, so every day I find myself writing riffs. Um, I'm in the studio next week to record a single that we can put out while we're still off the road and everything. And I came up with this little riff and uh, I'll just play it because yeah. I'm just going to play it. Come so- on.
but that was something. <laughs> oh, I cannot wait to hear that, man. That sounds awesome. Uh, well, look, um, I, what else can we say other than uh, I miss you, man? It's you know, Hopefully at some point later this year, things will lighten up a bit. And if not, I guess NAM 2022 or something. Uh, yes, I, I miss you guys and thank you so much. And I watch the Andertons videos all the time because they bring me so much <laughs> joy while I'm sitting at home. Oh, you're too kind, man. Well, look, uh, love to you. Uh, you know, you're, I'm so sorry to hear that, that news about your, your dad, which we talked about beforehand. And, you know, it's, you know, love to all your family and everything like that. And virtual virtual hugs. And uh, yeah, good luck. I hope that I hope you, that you continue to feel inspired to write stuff and that the recording goes well. And yes, good luck with the guitar. Obviously, <laughs> mustn't forget. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Much right. love to you guys. Yeah. And thanks for everything. All right. Take care. See you soon. Cheers.